All right, team, put on your detective hats because we've got a real math mystery to solve. Is the square root of 7 rational or irrational? Let's break it down. Every number falls into one of two categories, rational or irrational. Rational numbers are like the model students of math, neat, orderly, and always able to be written as a fraction, a over b, where both a and b are integers. Irrational numbers, on the other hand, are the rebels. They refuse to be written as a neat fraction a over b where a and b are integers and therefore their decimals go on forever, never repeating, like a story that just doesn't have an ending. So, what do you think about the square root of 7? Is it the well-behaved, tidy kind of number, or does it belong in the wild, chaotic world of the rebels? Let's dig in and crack this case wide open. All right, here's the deal. I'm pretty convinced that the square root of 7 is irrational. But how do we prove it? I can't just go around testing every single integer, dividing, squaring, and hoping not to find that's equal to 7. That would take forever, literally, an infinite amount of time. So, we need a better plan. And what's the best way to unmask a number pretending to be rational? A good old contradiction. Because, let's be honest, what's a math mystery without a little dramatic twist? Let's get ready to expose this number for what it really is. So here's the game plan. We assume that the square root of 7 is rational and see if that assumption leads to a contradiction. If it does, we'll have no choice but to conclude that the square root of 7 is actually irrational. Let's dive in and crack this case. Alright, here's the plan. We're going to assume the opposite of what we want to prove. So, let's assume that the square root of 7 is actually rational. That means we could write it as a fraction, where both the top number and the bottom number are integers, and they don't have any common factors. So, let's say the square root of 7 equals a fraction, with the top number being a and the bottom number being b. Now, to eliminate the square root, we square both sides of the equation. This means we have a squared over b squared equals 7. Then, we multiply both sides by b squared to get rid of the denominator. Now, we're left with a squared equals 7 times b squared. At this point, we don't have a contradiction just yet, but we're starting to set up the pieces for one. Now, let's take a step back and look closely at what we've got. We've got a squared equals 7 times b squared. That means a squared is divisible by 7, right? And this is where things start to get interesting. There's a really important mathematical rule that says, if a prime number divides a square, it must also divide the number itself. So, because a squared is divisible by 7, this means that a itself must also be divisible by 7. We can write it as 7 times some integer. Let's call it k. So now, we have a equals 7k. Now, let's plug that back into our original equation. A squared equals 7b squared. If a equals 7k, then squaring both sides gives us a squared equals 7k squared, which becomes 49k squared. Now our equation looks like 49k squared equals 7b squared. Let's simplify that by dividing both sides by 7. This leaves us with 7k squared equals b squared. And now, we can see that b squared is also divisible by 7. By the same logic we used with a, this means b must also be divisible by 7. But, he but here's where things take a crazy turn. Remember when we started, we assumed that a and b had no common factors. But now we've just shown that both a and b are divisible by 7. This is a huge contradiction. We've proven that they do have a common factor after all. Since assuming was rational led us straight into a contradiction town, that means our assumption must be wrong. So is irrational, case closed. All right, for the overachievers in the room, don't worry, I see you. We're going to take this up a notch and try a different angle. So, let's pretend for a moment that the square root of 7 is rational. If that were the case, then it would be a root of the equation x squared minus 7 equals 0. Now, here's where the fun begins. Enter the rational root theorem. Sounds fancy, right? This theorem tells us that if a rational number is a root of a polynomial, it must be expressible as a fraction a over b where it divides the constant term, in this case, minus 7, and b divides the leading coefficient, which is 1 in this case. So, we're on a mission now. We're looking for a fraction a over b where it divides minus 7, and b divides 1. Now, let's think about that for a second. The factors of minus 7 are, well, just plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 7, and the factors of 1. Oh, that's just plus or minus 1. So, the possible rational candidates for a root of this equation are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 7. Now, now comes the fun part, testing them. Let's try plugging these potential candidates into our equation and see if any of them work. First, let's try one. If we plug it in, we get 1 squared minus 7 equals minus 6, not 0. Fail. Next, let's try minus 1. Minus 1 squared minus 7 equals minus 6, again, not 0. Fail. Now, let's try 7. 
7 squared minus 7 equals 42, nope, not 0, and lastly, minus 7, minus 7, squared minus 7 equals 49 to 7 equals 42, still not 0, another fail, none of these candidates work, and here's the kicker, since we've tested all the possibilities and none of them fit, we can safely say that no rational roots exist for this equation, therefore, the assumption that the square root of 7 is rational has been completely debunked, it's like we've been hunting down a ghost all along, and now we finally caught it, the square root of 7 is irrational, case closed, well, there you have it, folks, we've just solved the mystery in two different ways, and I've gotta say, it feels pretty good, in the first approach, we assumed that the square root of 7 was rational, and then we used the fact that if a prime number divides b squared, it must also divide b, it was like following a treasure map that led us straight to a dead end, and we found our contradiction staring us right in the face, classic case of math drama, then, in the second approach, we whipped out the rational root theorem, which is like the mathematical version of calling in backup. We took our best shot at testing every possible rational root, and guess what? None of them worked. It was like being on a reality show where you're given a bunch of clues to find the answer, but you end up with zero winners. And, lo and behold, no rational roots, no square root of 7 as a fraction. But here's the kicker. No matter which path we took, we ended up in the same place. Square root of 7 is irrational. It's not just a guess, it's the truth. Math is spoken, and it's not going back on its word. The next time someone asks if the square root of 7 is rational, you can confidently look them in the eye and say, nope, and I can prove it. You'll be a math detective, solving mysteries with style. If you enjoyed this lesson, don't forget to subscribe for more cool math tricks.